let's see here. Okay, I think that's already okay. I think all the technology is working. All right, so welcome, guys. I'm Nicholas David Nan of the Center for Conscious Ascension. I'm going to share the screen here, a little presentation as well to support this. Um, your webcam's already gone to the right. If you've got you, and um, you click on the little three by three matrix, you can then um, reshape the webcam so you can see people a bit better. Okay. Pick up the new guys here. I'm just going to promote you to panelists if you want. Just click on the little box to say yes and you can communicate with us much better. But there's also the chat, shooting a bit shy as well. Okay, so this is a manifestation webinar, that manifest your sole purpose. So I hope this will help you create what you desire in your life a bit more. And uh, as lightworkers, well, I guess you are here to help the world. Um, and you each have a special gift of service hidden deep within your soul. This was me actually a long time ago, but no matter how, what you've tried, you just can't clear the blocks, the emotional blocks to manifesting it. So this webinar is about gracefully healing some of those blocks. We're making a start on that so that you can feel more fulfilled as you start to deliver your gift of service to the world. All right. So... What I'd like to do is hear from you guys uh, a little bit about why you're here, just so we can sort of set collective intention, which is why we have a, have a bit of a discussion. So if you if you got your video on, just wave at me and speak to peace. I just want to get a feel for this. And if you're a bit shy, you can just send, me, send it to me on chat or just switch your microphone on if you haven't got the video on and just say your name, okay, and start chatting away. So. so when you speak, just like to hear where you are, what brought you here and what's your intention, Jennifer. Hi, um, I'm Jennifer. I'm, I'm calling from Tampa, Florida area. And um, I'm here because I've been stuck for a long time. And once I did my soul contract reading online, um, I've learned a lot about myself. So I, I want to keep moving forward and, and get unstuck. Okay, thank you. Who else would like to share? Okay, Maria. Hi, everybody. I'm still in Scotland <laughs> and feeling very creative, but I don't, I'm not able to create the right working environment for me because I'm still in my freezing cellar like cold, lovely cottage. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll see what we can do. All right, thank you. Who wants to go next? Amanda. I am from um, Michigan, but I'm calling from Florida also. I am in Melbourne, which is on the other side of Florida from her, <laughs> from Jennifer. Um, I bought your book, the um, soul, soul contract book, and it's um, hard. <laughs> so I went to your website and just saw, um, looked whatever I could find to Help me along my way. I'm rather new to everything. I just got um, spiritual when my dad passed away last year. So um, I'm a very beginner beginner. <laughs> but that's why I'm here. Okay, you're, you're fine. You're in the right place. Okay. Who else wants to share? Sit in intention. Sichi, am I saying that right? No, it's um, English. It's pronounced Siki. Siki. <laughs> I yeah. I speak to me in Mandarin or something. So. Oh, okay. Well, it's not one well, Mandarin, Suchi. Um, but I do have a soul contract reading with you in January. Um, That's right. But yeah. I was also like Amanda, where um, I stumbled upon your book just this month and read a lot through your things and just really curious um, because it really resonated with me of where I am in my life and also where I want to go. Like everything that you've said throughout your book was just like spot on for me. Um, and I'm just also curious of what, um, what your work is and how we're able to manifest and um, yeah, curious. <laughs> okay, thank you. And where are you? Yeah, where are you oh, at? I'm in Dallas, Texas. Okay, all right, thank you. 
Who else wants to share their intention here? Karen? Hi, I'm Karen from Virginia, outside of DC. And um, I've taken uh, Divine Healing 1 and 2 with Almira. Yep. And I also had a soul contract reading done by someone else. And um, then I read your book. So I'm just here for more information. And um, I'm kind of new you know, to this for the past two years as well. And um, like Jennifer, um, I probably, I have some blocks I need to unblock. Okay. Sounds like you've been busy though. So. Yeah. <laughs> All Thanks. right. Okay. Zana, do you want to have a say? Zana knows me pretty well. So. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm from Ontario, Canada. Um, I'm a student of Nicholas. I've um, taken most things he's offered, not everything, but most things. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just here uh, today just uh, just to receive. So I have, have had a lot going on in the last couple of years and uh, kind of spend my year to kind of sort of find my way and find a new path and, you know, new spiritual tools and stuff like that and uh, learn some really great ones through Nicholas and, uh, and also with Elmira as well too. And uh, yeah, anyway, just... Uh, um, taking it all in and just uh again just here to receive just uh you know whatever that this just lined up for me to be able to take this today so there i am thank you okay. welcome thank you all right jc yep you have to switch on the mic right hi i'm here to dilute the north american contingent well, well done because <laughs> <laughs> i'm from beautiful bonkers brighton yeah uh, and I am just, I've just started uh, teaching a friend of mine as a sort of uh, practice coaching client, uh, like how to heal trauma. Um, and so I'm kind of like interested in how you work and how you do healing. Yeah. Because I think uh, working with energy or spirit guides or whatever is going to be a lot more effective than the sort of typical three, what I call 3D methods. Yeah. Okay, thanks for coming. All right, Juliet, do you wanna, you wanna put your oar on and have a say? You Hi there. There you are, you moved, moved on the screen, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Welcome. Thank you. Um, I was on a webinar the other day uh, with you and uh, I've watched a couple of the other webinars as well um, on the YouTube channel and uh, I'm in the process of reading the book and doing my charts and friends and family's charts um, and uh, I'm interested to dive more deeply into your work. I'm signed up for the training in March, April and uh, very excited um, yeah, to find more out about this work. I'm in uh, Little Hampton, just down the road from Brighton and uh, sometimes I'm also in Tadworth, Surrey yeah okay so you're like in england in england, in england. okay <laughs> cool thank you oh uh, yeah i'm with a message from sarah robock in new mexico looking for physical healing okay thanks thanks for that sarah all right anybody else want to say hi and introduce themselves while you're here uh i think even you guys on the attendee list who haven't Come on to the panelists. List. You can still message me. I think still learning how the how the Zoom detail the details of Zoom work. Otherwise, I'll start. So, and no one else. Okay, we will start then. Okay, so let me share the screen again. Right. So. How do we get to this gift of service? Let's talk about that. Right. So, I'll find my pen. It's got to get Zoom to let me have a pen to draw on this thing. So, what we're going to do with this webinar is that I'm going to teach you a meditation of oneness to access your multidimensional self. 
And the core principle of um, manifestation is to connect to source, connect to the oneness of all that is. And if you are connected to that, rather than feeling separate, because initially we feel separate from source, because what happened here was source, so they call it the 12th dimension, we're in the third dimension down here. It's just a higher vibrational level. It, it wanted to know more about itself. So rather than thinking about itself and creation, it thought it would have a direct experience of it. So it expanded its consciousness into many different parts. And they descended, those parts of its consciousness descended through the dimensions, 10, 11, 10th, or ran down to the fifth, fourth. Then this physical densified reality, we're in the third dimension. And source had little parts of itself, which are us, our souls, separate so far away from itself that we forgot we come from there, especially when we're embodied. So we tend to feel disconnected from God, source, God in a spiritual sense, and source. which is why it's so challenging to manifest because we feel this is, our, this is us in our little earth suits and that's all there is. And we have to struggle and fight and compete for resources here to make anything happen. Some of you expressed your struggles. Um, and so what we're gonna do here is that we're going to learn to connect to the oneness of all that is because ultimately there's only one great soul here. We're all actually part of the one great soul. We're just in this illusion. We're in these different bodies and we have these earth suits on, these avatars, and that we're staring at each other as a separate being when we're not. So the core principle here is that if you feel unified with all that is, which is what we're going to do today, then you can draw from all that is whatever's in divine order to manifest for you. Nothing that you need or, or want comes from this third dimension. Because all this reality is, for those of you who've seen the matrix, is a three-dimensional projection screen of higher dimensional energies coming in and manifesting into form. So you're not going to get anything from this reality, as you might have noticed. I think just things just don't occur the way you want a lot of the time. But if you connected to the manifestation of in the higher dimensions that your higher self has created, you connect to it and you feel one with all this, including that. And because you're one with it, you can attract it to you. And then it will, energy will come into the reality and it will physically manifest for you. Because this is a projection screen, but you've got to get to the source of the projection, which is in, which is in the higher dimensions. That's the key to the whole thing. And feel that you're one with it. That's when things do start to happen. Provided that you are emotionally clear enough. Provided you feel worthy of it. Provided you, you're not sabotaging it with what's in your ego, which is described by the soul contract. That's the tricky part. That's why we have the soul contract work and we have the divine healing work, which is what this is about here, to clear this. If you are 100% emotionally clear and your ego was surrendered and dissolved, things will turn up instantaneously. If you remember in the Bible, Christ just manifested things literally out of thin air. He was doing what I'm talking about here because he spent well, 10 or 12 years traveling the world. He disappeared for that time, going to ascended masters and being trained all around the world to clear his ego because he had to have one because he was in a human form. And he was really the consciousness of this galaxy, the logos of this galaxy. It's not, it, hasn't, doesn't, it doesn't happen too often. He came here to bring higher consciousness to Earth. So to manifest what you desire, it's about focusing on what you wish to manifest first, as if it's already done. Because that manifestation is coming from the heart, usually. It might come from your ego, you want that Ferrari, they talk about in the secret, whatever. But that won't happen because if it's, well, if it's not in divine order for it to happen. But if it's in divine order for you to manifest something, and provided you clear enough of your issues, the emotional issues in the ego, eventually it will turn up. And that's what we're going to do today. 
what we're going to do is we're going to first connect to the sense of oneness. And then we're going to invoke higher consciousness to bring in what you desire. And then what we're going to do is it's going to trigger all the things in you which are subconscious, which are preventing it from happening. And some of them will come up in your consciousness, which is what we want. Some of it may be a little unpleasant emotionally. And then once it's in your conscious, feeling consciousness, we're going to clear those layers. So effectively, we focus on what we desire, deal with the stuff in the way, and then there's a better chance this will start to turn up for you. That's the core principle of what we're doing today. Okay. Any questions on that so far? Everyone clear on that? Good. Right. So. What to focus on? So most of us, most of us have our ego gazing in our navel, looking at all the things in our life which aren't working. Because ego loves to do that. And because manifestation follows intention, because you're focusing on what we don't want, guess what happens? You get more of it. So it's a, a negative feedback loop. I, used, I did that most of my life. But we are more than just our emotional separation patterns or our pain points that are bugging us. We're much vaster with us. So this is all that you are, past, present and future lives. And so it's about focusing on what you really wish to create in your life. It's not about saying, I don't want this, and I don't want that, because that just, the universe doesn't recognise Negatives, it says, okay, you want more of that because you're focusing on it. So about focusing on the stuff, that, the final state that you wish this manifestation to be in. And provided it's in divine order and you clear enough issues, it will start to turn up. So it's a big shift because our ego is looking, always looking at what's not working. So it's about focusing on, well, What's the final state without constraint? Within reason, of course, of physics and your life situation that you wish to, you desire to create as if it's already done. It's not work in progress, it's as if it's already done. What does that look like? And then focusing on manifesting that, because you're part of manifesting the negative stuff you don't like, and the positive stuff is exactly the same. Just that where our ego wants to focus on the negative stuff because it wants to keep us separate from God. And what we're going to do is more connect to oneness here. So we don't worry about how it's going to happen, who's going to pay for it, or anything like that, or the processes or the people we need help with. We just focus on as if it's already done. And if it's something in your heart that comes from the soul, it will start to attract to it all the resources and people and situations to make it happen. Okay, so as you can remember, what does it feel like as if it's already done? Let the universe work out the details. Because each of you is a spark of the divine. You are God incarnate. We just forgot, right? You just forgot. And Christ even said, okay, I'm not a Christian, but he said, you can do what I can do, which is what I'm basically saying here if you do enough clearing of your issues. It's always a caveat with these things. So what do we have to do to get there? Well, we need to start by peeling our ego onion created by the soul contract. Because it's this onion here and the many layers of it, which is stopping you stopping the pure soul energy, the flame of consciousness from manifesting what you desire. So you've got to keep peeling this onion and these layers will be triggered by you focusing on what you, what you want to create, say over here, because the ego doesn't want you to create the good stuff. It's designed to stop you. So then you, then you have the desire to work it through to actually get clearer to manifest the stuff. I mean, our most powerful drives come because our soul wants to deliver its gift of service somehow. 
Okay. So, how do we peel the onion? Well, it's basically how do we go about healing? Because right, we're going to do some of, quite a bit of that too with the divine healing. So, the requirements for healing are an identification of the issue, which is blocking you moving forward, a willingness, desire, and courage to actually address the issue. Because most people, even I do it, go into avoidance of feeling or addressing an issue that's a really tough one because our ego doesn't like pain. So it's about bringing feeling consciousness to the issue. Okay, so it's about bringing our awareness to the issue. And this is the feeling consciousness here. So this is sky blue color. It's about expanding our feeling consciousness into the red issue here. Okay. Expanding that. And the more you can feel that issue, which is all the soul wants to do, I want you to feel ever so briefly the issue, some of it painful. And it just wants you to feel your way through it from negative state of what you don't want to the positive state where it's clearer and there's more space for other good things. That's what it's trying to do. So what happens here is that the soul's not, uh, the, the ego is not too keen on us feeling our way through the issue because it's, it's programmed to keep us away from God. So it puts up this turquoisey color. This is a frozen, it freezes these issues so we can't access them, it buries them. It numbs us out. Because what you feel, can't feel, you can't heal. And what you can feel, you can heal. And in the West, we've learned to control our emotions with the prefrontal cortex. So it, fit, it fits in with what the ego really wants to do. Okay. So I'm going to talk about the meditation of oneness now. Okay. So. I want you to close your eyes, take your shoes off, and have your feet flat on the ground so you're properly grounded. And we're gonna, I'm gonna teach you this. So I want you to breathe into your heart space. And breathing through the mouth is important because that gets us into the body. And we don't want to breathe through the nose because that keeps us in our head. So I want you to set clear intent of what you wish to create in the manifestation as if it's already done. You can't have any negatives though. You can't have, no, I don't want this and don't want that because otherwise you'll get it. Okay? Just get clear on the positive state you want to be in here. Okay. And having your eyes closed, because it keeps the mental body quiet, focus on it as if it's already done. And feel how it is, as if it's lovely, this lovely manifestation is already done. Feel the joy, the gratitude, whatever it is comes up for you as if it's already done. And let go of all the ego chatter and resistance to your manifestation. Just observe it, let it just pass by. Now we're going to connect to the oneness of all that is. So 
we can attract this manifestation to us. So we're gonna undertake what's called the unified chakra. This is a light body meditation. We're gonna create a glowing ball of light in the heart chakra. We're gonna expand it up through all our body chakras out to the 14th chakra at source and all the way down past your feet. So I want you to breathe through your mouth, the ultraviolet light of the soul into the center of your heart, creating a glowing ball of light. Breathe the ultraviolet light of the soul into the center of your heart and expand and encompass the throat chakra and the solar plexus. Forming one unified field of light within, through, and around your body. Breathe your awareness into the center of the heart and expand and encompass the brow chakra and the navel chakra, forming one unified field of light within, through, and around your body. Breathe your awareness into the center of the heart. And expand and encompass the crown chakra and the base chakra, forming one unified field of light. Thin through and around your body. Breathe your awareness into the center of the heart. And expand and encompass the astral, causal, and electromagnetic bodies, forming one unified field of light within, through, and around your body. Breathe your awareness into the center of the heart. And expand and encompass the eighth chakra, one hand length above the crown, slightly forward. And the omega chakra, one hand length below the base of the spine. Forming one unified field of light. Within, through and around your body. Breathe your awareness into the center of the heart. And expand and encompass the eighth chakra, one hand length directly above the crown and the upper thighs, forming one unified field of light within, through, and around your body. Allow the emotional body to merge with the physical fields. Breathe your awareness into the center of the heart. Expand and encompass the ninth chakra, two hand lengths above your head and the lower thighs, forming one unified field of light. 
within, through, and around your body. And allow the mental body to merge with the physical fields. Breathe your awareness into the center of your heart. And expand and encompass the 10th chakra, three hand lengths above the head and your knees, forming one unified field of light within, through, and around your body. And allow the spiritual body to merge with the physical fields to create the throne. Breathe your awareness into the center of your heart. Expand and encompass the 11th chakra way above your head and your upper calves forming one unified field of light within, through, and around your body. And allow Oversoul to merge with the throne. Breathe your awareness into the center of the heart. Expand and encompass the 12th chakra way above your head and your lower calves, forming one unified field of light within, through, and around your body. And allow the Christ of us all to merge with the throne. Breathe your awareness into the center of the heart. Expand and encompass the 13th chakra way above your head and your feet, forming one unified field of light within, through, and around your body. And allow the I am of soul to merge with the throne. Breathe your awareness into the center of the heart and expand and encompass the 14th chakra way above your head, all the way back to source and way below your feet, forming one unified field of light within, through, and around your body and allow source to merge with the throne. Breathe your awareness into the center of the heart. And allow the highest frequencies of your spirit to radiate from the 10th chakra, three hand lengths above the head, down into your crown chakra, down into your heart chakra. Have it radiate out in all directions into the kingdom. So I want you to breathe through your mouth into the unified field. Breathe in and out at your own pace. Breathe into oneness, the oneness of all that is from which we can manifest whatever you desire. It's in divine order with the soul, it's a path.
feel the vast extension of who you truly are. Feel how your attentions move not just from, from this third dimensional reality to all the different dimensions in which you reside. And this manifestation process comes from Wayne Dyer's Manifest Your Destiny book. I've just expanded it with the light body techniques here. So manifestation is done at sunrise, normally, and sunset, keeping your eyes closed. So I'm going to first teach you the sunrise manifestation. So this is where you focus on what you desire to create. Basically, we are now unified to all that is. And now this is about putting your manifestation that you felt in your heart at the beginning into creative action. So I want you to take the manifestation in your heart and allow it to drop down to your base chakra, the center of your creation. And the meditation is normally 20 minutes long and we split it into three, three lots of seven minutes normally, but we're gonna do a bit shorter here. That's normally what it is, seven minutes for each aspect of it. And the first part is breathing the manifestation from the base chakra to the crown. And the second part is the manifestation of the base chakra out the crown, because you've cleared the pathway of the first third, you need blockages out the crown chakra into the oneness which you're unified with. So you're actually basically saying to the universe, bring this to me because it's already part of me. Bring this into physical manifestation. And we're making the sound of God, we're making the sound of, ah, so invoking oneness with all letters in both those first two phases. And then the third piece, the third part, the last seven minutes is we're breathing from the manifestation from the base chakra, a center of creation, up the crown chakra to oneness, and we're allowing gratitude to be felt as if it's already happened. Gratitude is very powerful and that it, it basically opens a pathway through the ego to source and then magic happens. So Microphones on, people, because you can hear each other here. It's more powerful that way. You can switch your mics on. Um, and we can then, it'll reinforce each other. And if we collectively do this, it's much more powerful as a group. Okay. So <laughs> focusing on your manifestation, the feeling of it, the vision of it, however it is for you, whatever senses work best for you, right, in the base chakra. The feel as it's already done. Feel the joy, the gratitude, whatever comes up for you. Happiness, relief, whatever's up for you, as if this is already done. So after me, we're going to breathe from the base up to the crown with the sound ah. So we just go and we're breathing the manifestation up as we make the sound. So we go ah. 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 rising. body expand as you do this. Ah. 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 
Second stage, we're going to breathe from base to crown and out to one. It's the same R sound, same manifestation. Ah. Ah. Breathing out to one, sounding and out. To one. Ah. 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 Ah, uh, 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 as if it's already done. Ah, 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 ah. Now, whatever feelings are coming up, just to emerge. Mm. Ah. 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 third phase this is normally the third lot of seven minutes and you use a stopwatch for this um an alarm so i'll take countdown timer and we're going to do the same we're going to do um same sound of r but feeling gratitude as if it's already done this is very powerful in which case you go from base chakra to crown out to oneness as if this manifestation is already done Ah. 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 closed it's very important so the mental body doesn't cut in just breathing through your mouth still become fully present of what comes up emotionally as a result of focusing on what you desire to create
because the ego regards what we're doing as a threat to its control over you. So it's going to throw up its all its hidden patterns, which have been stopping the manifestation you've been desiring. And it's okay, whatever feeling's coming up, just be with it. I want you to bring feeling awareness to these patterns. But then we're going to, when you've got that, we're going to go and clear a whole bunch of them. So you get a little bit closer to your manifestation. It's okay to have negative emotions, feelings. We're trying to flush out all the hidden stuff. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start doing a bit of divine healing. I open the energy space before we start it. And your job is to stay breathing into whatever feelings have come up, especially the negative ones, because we're going to clear a whole layer of it now. And you may feel different sensations in your body as we do this. And it's okay, it just means energy shifting. So the first thing we're going to do is clear from divine healing level one, the training, interference and control from outside influences, which is affecting you, especially with this sort of stuff. I'll be doing the command code silently, just so you can stay in the feeling space. Okay, so you can start thinking about it. I'm going to clear earthbound souls first. These are beings who've left the physical body and they've attached to you because you're carrying similar issues to the original host personality. Okay, so here we go. It'll go quietly, but you'll probably feel stuck. Feel the energy shift as they leave. Maybe in your body, on your body, or a bit of both. You might want to yawn or burp. That's fine too, because that means the energy is shifting. Okay. Breathing through the mouth is key, absolutely key here. So you're not in your head. Let me thank the angels who help, helped us for their assistance with us. We're now going to release extraterrestrial presence as beings who are vibrating at a high level. But they're very interested in our emotions, especially. But the very act of them observing us changes the nature of what's happening. So the law of relativity. Not to worry about with these guys. So we're going to shift these now. Feel the energetic shift as they leave. And now we're going to clear the rest. We're going to clear discards, entities, and attachments. And these beings live on the lower octave of the astral plane, and they're designed to stop us connecting to source, connecting to higher consciousness. I'm going to clear these now.
So that I've left, so maybe if I a little lighter now. And keep breathing into whatever feeling has come up. Stay connected to the emotions that got triggered by you focusing on what you truly desire. And even if you weren't clear what you truly desired, the first intention could be to be clear. So you go with where as far as you can go in the manifestation. So just breathe into whatever's coming up for you. Okay, you may have heat or cold coming at your body, depending on what's going on. And connect with whatever negative emotion came up that's operating in your life that was trying to stop you. You now become aware of, or we're already aware of, it's trying to stop you from manifesting your desire. Feel it. But don't let the ego go into a story about it. Just be aware of the feeling. That's the main thing not mentalizing and breathing into it, but you're sort of open to all aspects of this feeling. Expand your conscious awareness, your feeling awareness here into all aspects of the negative emotion or state you're in. Become aware of any attachments the ego has to this. And most importantly, any feelings of being bad it has, for having this feeling. And any judgment it has of itself, carrying this, because this judgment of feeling bad actually means the program is connected, it's attached to us by this judgment, it locks it in. And the more you can just let go, just accept the feeling for what it is, okay? The more you can open to it. The more it can integrate and heal. Breathing into that. Bigger and bigger rest. This is the critical bit because we're trying to, we've ambushed this program, we've triggered it to come out in the open. Now we want to clear it as deeply as possible. Just sorting out another window for you here, the next phase. Now we're going to do a chart called Main Low Frequency Programs in Divine Healing. And currently you're feeling the Main Low Frequency Program. Okay. It's 
So I switched the microphones off because someone had a cat in the background there. So if you guys want to just unmute now, as many of you as you want to, we're going to do a divine healing command code to clear this feeling. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna say this command code out to you in bite-sized chunks. Keep your eyes closed and I'll just I'll say a few words at a time. Okay, just breathe into it. And so this is where you're taking charge because you are the creator, you just forgot. And so you're commanding the universe to clear this program. And the more you believe that you're the creator, the more powerful this is going to be. So repeat after me. We are Saint Germain. We are Saint Germain. Yes. For the purple flame. For the purple flame. Through the aura and subtle bodies. Through the aura and subtle bodies. To burn away all low frequency energies. To burn away all low frequency, all low frequency energies. energies. That we have discovered. That we have discovered. Oh, So that new higher level vibrations. So that new higher level vibrations. Higher level vibrations can be accessed. Can be accessed. So we we'll have a little pause to allow that to happen. Saint Germain and higher self. Saint Germain and higher self. Please burn out in one go. Please burn out in one go. One hundred percent the core issue. 100% of the all levels and dimensions. Through all levels and dimensions. Now, you pause, let that happen. 100% the original cause. 100% the original cause. Through all levels and dimensions. Through all levels and dimensions. 100% the source of its power. 100% the source of its power. Through all levels and dimensions. Through all levels and dimensions. One hundred percent all energy attached. One hundred percent all energy attached. Through all levels and dimensions. Through all levels and dimensions. One hundred percent all of its effects. One hundred percent of all of its effects. Through all levels and dimensions. Through all levels and dimensions. Thank you. Thank you. Feel the shift. You might want to yawn. It's fun. See energy shifting. Now, a lot of what we go through is us processing past life issues. So a lot of 80% of the things we go through in this life are unresolved issues from past lives. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to clear any past life blockages to that manifestation of yours. All right, so I need to close your eyes and just relax. Lean back from the vertical if you're sitting forward because that takes you more into the right feminine brain if you lean forward the mental body cuts in the masculine part of you and that actually is in the way you feel more unified when you're more in the feminine flow state of being and just with your eyes closed just track in the time space continuum behind you you may see strands of energy or light now the strands of these past lives, files, which are showing new fields ready to leave. You may, you may see pictures, you may become aware of feelings, you may see the whole scene. It'll be what it has to be for you. But the main thing is to be conscious of them because we're going to go and clear those past lives which are holding you up in this life to manifesting what you desire.
breathe into those past lives. Some may not be pleasant, some may be okay, but some may be quite varied what you've been through. Because I've come up at this time because the soul wants to clear them, because it wants you to work this through. It wants you to manifest your the desire that's deep in your heart. Now we're going to just command code from um, this is, comes from a past life death chart, but we're not too worried about death at the moment. We're just going to do a variation on this chart. So repeat after me, bite-sized chunks, breathing into those past lives. Higher self, please clear, heal, and integrate. Higher self, please clear, heal, and integrate. All these files and memories. All these files and memories. Including all cellular memories. Including all cellular memories. The DNA and the subatomic levels. DNA and subatomic levels. I am now ready to heal. I'm now ready to heal. All traumatic lifetimes. All traumatic lifetimes. That have been blocking my manifestation. Are blocking my manifestation. At all levels and dimensions. At all levels and dimensions. All time frames. All time frames. Realities. Realities. And universes. And universes. Okay, we pause there. We let that happen because in divine healing, we need to allow each stage of a command code to happen. And give it a bit of time, space, to do its thing. It'll feel like the energy is sort of busy, really, when that happens. Okay, I command that any soul fragments. I command any soul fragments. Held with these memories. Held with these memories. Held with these memories. And now return to me. And now return to me. Fully whole and intact. Fully whole and intact. As appropriate. That's appropriate. That's appropriate. I welcome these soul fragments back. I welcome these soul fragments back. We pause there. Did that happen? I command that the whole holographic matrix. I command that the whole holographic matrix. Be repaired. Be repaired. Through all layers and levels. Through all layers and labels. And then brought into full alignment. And then brought into full alignment. Integration, integration and balance. <laughs> integration and balance. To allow for, for wholeness to emerge. To allow for, allow for wholeness to emerge. To make that happen. Little pause. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we embrace that shift, keeping your eyes closed. And we've dismantled quite a bit of the ego with these, with these command codes, these different charts and divine healing. So we need to help integrate what we've done. And we do that through, in this case, energetic nutrition. So if you open your eyes, we've been looking at the nutrition chart and divine healing level one. Divine healing has 26 charts per in a given level. And basically we follow the flow of the higher self to actually move through them to clear specific issues that are presenting. So if you're drawn to these four of these, there's, what I want you to do is, is that we're going to pick one of these which resonates with you. Okay, so, okay, we have to choose a column A, a B, C, or D. So a, B, A is amino acids, B is essential fatty acids, and C is minerals, and D is vitamins, okay? So with the mind healing, we're using the higher self to guide us. You don't have to work it out at a human level. It's about letting go and allowing the higher self to come through. So 
Why don't you just close your eyes and do exactly as I say next and just see what happens. Pick a number one to four. And whatever number came in your head at that moment is the one to use and write that down. That number came from your higher self. I got two. So two is the same as B. A is one, B is two, C is three, D is four. And then those of you, those of you who got number one for amino acids, close your eyes. And pick a number one to 25, whatever, whatever dropped in your head first. Okay, because your high self's trying to pick, a, pick an amino acid. Pick a number one to twenty-five. First number is the correct one. Write that down from the page. Those of you got two, close your eyes. Pick a number one to nineteen. Whatever number drops in your head is the correct one. Write down what, what the fatty acid was. You don't have to know what it means. The high self is in charge here. Now, those of you who got three, which are minerals, close your eyes. And pick a number one to 21, and that'll be a mineral. Write that down. Those of you who got four, which are vitamins, close your eyes. And pick a number one to 26 and write down the first number and then have a look on the table to see which vitamin my high self picked for you. Because your high self wants you to wake up, and wants you to get back to source and consciousness. The purpose of divine healing is to get back to source and consciousness and to peel the ego so it completely surrenders. Okay, and now we're going to do a command code together. Because what you've done is you've gone and put that energetic nutrition into what we call the divine healing stack. The energetic space where all the different parts of the system work together to actually work on the specific issue that you're working on at the moment, the higher self's guiding you through. Okay. So you don't have to even remember what it was. The fact that you picked it and said, and your intention was that was the one I'm going to infuse is nutrition. Nutrition comes in as a frequency to integrate. It's not a logical process. So we're getting the energy of the physical substance here. So repeat after me. Higher self. Higher self. Higher self. Please encode this nutrient. Please encode this nutrient. In the perfect balance. Perfect balance. That is required. That is required. And clear and align. All pathways. All pathways. For maximum assimilation. For maximum assimilation. Absorption. Absorption. And utilization. And utilization. You close your eyes and just feel the shift. Does the cat feel that as well, Amanda? The cat. My cat's not meowing, but she's all over the place. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, the cat's feeling the energy. So <laughs> let me say thank you. Expressing gratitude is very important because it opens up the connection to source, as I said earlier. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we've gone and cleared a whole bunch of programs. We've been cleared the. Um, we went and cleared the following programs that were triggered by um, 
So we're basically empowering, you're getting empowered here with divine healing because it's a master key to ascension. And we show you the index. So I'm just going to make this slightly smaller. Okay, so we started off by clearing the interference programs. We're only halfway through the manifestation. I'm just doing this to have a bit of a break to let you integrate. We clear interferences and blocks from outside influences. Then we cleared my low, my, the main low frequency programs that came up. Then we cleared any past life energies. I just adjusted this past life chart. It wasn't past life this. It might have been, but not fully. And then we infused nutrition to integrate that change. And as you can see, there's 26 charts here. And in Divine Healing, we use all of them in level one. It's what you learn in four days in training if you came on it on Zoom. And the higher self basically guides us through these charts as we work. Because there's, there's a divine order, a way of dismantling the ego. And you don't have to work anything out. You just learn to surrender and follow the flow of your higher self. And it will guide you to clear the issues. Okay. So, right. I have a little bit of feedback because before we go off and do the second part of the manifestation. So, all right. So, I'd be, and it gives you time to integrate. So, I'd be interested if anyone wants to share how that whole process was. Just wave at me, Maria. Mm -hmm. Well, I've done several of your divine healing webinars, but I had a very strong feeling I needed to be here today. And that was the, the most powerful one. Uh, during that very first part, when we weren't making any sounds, I felt very emotional once you got to soul level. Yeah. I know it's my, it's my, it's a, it's my soul suffering. Yeah. And then during the second, the second part, I wasn't feeling anything. You were asking us to get into our feelings. I wasn't feeling anything until your cat Amanda started meowing. And then the floodgates of my emotions of despair opened. Because my what I'm doing to myself, blocking myself from by being in that cold home blocking myself from coming out with my work it has to do with my cat in spirit but it's really a despair that i'm not fulfilling our mission yeah it's not i'm missing him of course but it's like so that meow was a wake-up call for my feelings it was absolutely amazing thank you so much i don't know the name of your cat thank you so much okay thanks maria Anyone else want to share how, how the whole process was? Okay, Amanda. Um, I, I struggle really, um, really, really a lot with meditation. It's really hard for me to um, get out of my head. And um, in fact, I'm not quite sure I've ever been able to do it successfully. And um, when we were doing the first part um, of releasing, I actually felt my body go numb and stuff. So I think it, I, I think I did it this time. <laughs> yeah, well, that means some, some programs coming out, mm -hmm. it's creating the numbness so you can't feel stuff being pushed on. So that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. Anyone else want to share how that was? Jennifer? It was emotional you know, at first, but then as you were going through the levels of clearing those three, um, I got hot, you know, so, you know, like I really, really hot and then felt like there was, my hair was moving at the roots. Yeah. It was really very strange, but I wanted to say, I watched one of your recorded ones, YouTube previously, and normally I didn't, normally I don't feel anything in those clearings. I felt something leave my body it was like anxiety in my belly yep. and it was gone and it hasn't come back since yeah and that was just from the one of your previous recordings so i just was i'm gonna keep going <laughs> so i oh yeah left. yeah they're very powerful the recordings they, they retain the mm -hmm. transmission yeah. of 
the live experience. Thank yeah. You. So the heat is basically cellular release of the program. I saw you fanning yourself, so it means that it was, yes, a, it was, it was a hot flash. flash. <laughs> yeah, it's a hot flash. So. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Anyone else want to share how that was on the chat? Or Sarah said here, same here. I felt the emotion when I heard the cat. Yeah. Magic cat. There you go, Amanda. So anyone else? Okay, Juliet. Yeah, uh, the magic cat's mine. Um, <laughs> her name is Sophia. She's the goddess of wisdom. <laughs> there you go. And uh, um, yeah, it was uh, a very amazing experience. And um, my, I often when I do meditation or healings, I I I feel an intenseness in in my, in my head area. And I can't remember which part it was, but maybe when we were working with Saint Germain, um, I had all of a purple colour and the heat as well. Yeah. Me, yeah. Yeah. Things will shift. Yeah. Very good. Anybody, <laughs> anybody else want to share? Okay, Zana. Um, it was really good today. Um, done a quite a bit of this kind of clearing stuff this year. I took the divine healing twice. The beginning of the year with Nicholas and then I did it again just that couple of weeks ago with Elmira and um yeah so it's very 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 um profound the level of clearing that happens during these um so definitely recommend it if anybody's uh, kind of wanting even just for a little healing retreat is uh, why I took it again the second time um uh, yeah so I don't know today um it just felt like it really there's just uh, a much clearer channel of uh kind of like what I'm kind of working through right now. It just felt a lot clearer and a lot, uh, like it just, there was like an ease and um, just, uh, I don't know, like just a lightness to it today. So it was really awesome. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, anybody else? Okay. Uh, yeah. Namrata, yeah. This recording will be shared with, yeah. This, you will all receive an email of this recording. It'll be on the YouTube channel, but once we've got it edited, and, well, not, I don't bother editing them really. Um, once we've got it processed, you will get an email in a couple of days. It's a matter of when we can get to it. So, okay. Anybody else before we go to the next thing? No? Okay. So, that was the morning process. And in the description on the YouTube video, will be there'll be a link. Um, to a Vedic um, sunrise sunset calculator, which is much more accurate than you just do normal sunset and sunrise on the internet. They can be out by 20 minutes. So what it allows you to do is to put your exact address and it will tell you the precise time of sunset. The time, the shift from dark to light is a very powerful manifestation wise. Now it may not always be possible to do it exactly at that time because of, it may just be too early or you've got, got to go to work or there's a school run or whatever. So in there will also be a command code. You've just done some command codes, which where you can command the energy that you do whenever you do it to go back to the right time or fall to the right time. So the energy goes into the right place in this reality where you are, your now point, or at, at sunrise at, at, or sunset at your location. So there'll be a command code there too for just practical purposes. So in the morning, we manifest what we desire. In the evening at sunset, when it goes from light to dark, we express gratitude. It doesn't have to be for what you do in the morning. Usually the best thing is to do gratitude for the thing you're most grateful for that day. It could be even the tiniest thing. Okay, the cat ate all its food, or the, the kid ate all its food, or whatever. Okay. Um, and that gratitude is very powerful because it opens a channel to source. It cuts right through the ego construct. So it's the same process. It's 20 minutes, three equal point parts. I use a, I use a stop a count, countdown timer on my watch. Phones aren't so good because you have to look at the phone to switch the thing off. So you want something with proper button, physical buttons, a countdown timer, a watch, or, a, or like a sports timer, and so that you don't have to open your eyes. And you set it for seven minutes. And so you start it off. It starts, and then when it beeps, you know to move to the next 
part of the meditation, okay? All right. Um, some of the interval training timers, you can program that in to beep at specific times, okay? That's probably the best way. The main thing is not to open your eyes, that you're still in the space of the unity, because when your eyes open, the mental body switches on, you just lost the connection. That's why I had you have your eyes closed most of the time. So it's three phases. The first phase, we use the word om, um, sound of God, and we move the om, um, our gratitude from our base chakra, the creative center, up to our crown and clear the pathway for seven minutes. We'll do less, obviously. Then we go... The second phase is arm from the base, the crown out to oneness. And then on the third one, we go, oh, we do the word shalom. Do the word shalom from base to crown to oneness, still with gratitude, having gratitude for the same, for the same thing. Okay. And we'll just see how that goes. So I want you to close your eyes when you're ready. Just breathe into that unified field. Just sense what you're most grateful for. And it's important not to disclose what your manifestation is or what you're grateful for to anyone else because to maintain its privacy because the ego will want to share it and that breaks the energy of it. Okay, microphones on, so we can hear each other. It's more powerful when we do it as a group in terms of sound. Oh, face to crown, feeling gratitude. Oh. Second phase from base to crown to oneness at the top of your crown.
in that third phase. Shalom from the base <coughs> to the crown, out to oneness, feeling gratitude for the same issue, manifestation, situation. Shalom. 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 closed bringing in and out of the unified field sitting in that field of gratitude as if it's already done And just relax now and open your eyes. How was that, people? You want to briefly share that? How that, how that was? Settles. CG. I think for the most part, even in the early meditation, um, including this one, I felt relatively calm. Um, earlier, I did, when you were doing some clearing, I did feel um, emotions surge up um, and they were released. Um, for this meditation, um, I felt physically like some parts of me were just like moving um i don't know what it maybe it was energy um just throughout my body my legs my arms particularly my stomach um a lot of movements there um but for the most part it just felt really calm peaceful and very light so thank you yeah, the, the, that's this energy moving you're feeling in the body. It's this program release, cellular release happening. That's what's going on. 
certain programs are stored in different parts of the body, literally in the cells, in the water in your cells, which but you're basically digging them out because you just focus where you want it to go and the ego goes, no, no, we don't want that. And so the program's going to trigger that. That's, so we're tricking, tricking the ego, basically. Then we're clearing them. And it's like, ah, oh, they're not there anymore, which makes it a bit easier to get to where you want. So those of you who felt stuck, then if you do this repeatedly, gradually you'll melt them away. You'll melt them away. So that's the idea. Because divine healing is based on the principle of asking you shall receive. Okay, because you are the you are the creator, just forgot. Ask and eventually, if you keep doing this, you will clear the entire ego. And you will manifest what you desire, provided you get to the programs. It takes time, but it's a very fast way of clearing a lot of things which seem insurmountable, um, which we feel you know, may just be stuck with forever. And it's not the case. It's just the ego is telling you there's nothing you can do about it. It's part of its defense mechanism. Okay. So the way it works is that it's, it's basically a set of tools to clear your ego onion in the right order. That's in summary what it does. And it uses higher consciousness to guide you. You don't have to work it out. You just got to basically align to the higher self and it knows the right order. It built you so it knows in the way you are and knows how to dismantle you as well if you ask. So that's what we actually do in divine healing. It dismantles in the right order and certain issues trigger in our lives and we use that as an emotional gateway to actually work on the layer of the onion, which is basically saying, hi, I want to, uh, you know, this is Amanda's whatever, lack of trust or whatever you've got. I want to be cleared now because the ego saying, soul saying, I've had enough of this. High self will guide you. You get to the right charts. You saw that big sheet of charts. You've seen a few charts and it will take you through in the right order. And it's not something you can work out, but it has a plan. So we teach you how to align to that and flow and dismantle. We spend on the training, you can have sessions or one-on-one -on -one sessions or the training, which is a lot more cost-effective because then you can just do it yourself permanently. Basically, we go through all those 26 charts you saw in the right order where I explain how they work. I will demo the charts if it's a sim a simple chart, I will just do the chart on everybody. It's a complex chart, which is quite a few of them. I will demo on one guinea pig. Everyone gets a turn. Then you go off into breakout rooms in Zoom. Oh, yeah. Where, for those who don't know what they are, you, it's, a, it's a separate room where just two of you will go in and you'll give and receive and practice the charts. So you spend four days getting a massive healing by doing all the charts. Plus, you learn how to do it as well, obviously. Are there um, specific times that you have this um, or, or can I sign up anytime? Um, Are there like times of the year that you? Yeah, I'll, sh I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you when we run this, Amanda. So let's just get to the, um, let's have a look. We'll get to the dates. So. <clears throat> So the next one runs here in February next year. We run it three times a year. Okay. The next one runs over four days. It's four days in total. Okay. It runs on two weekends. It's because all the California moms said, Nicholas, can you split it on two weekends? Because it's early in the morning, but also I've got to go to work and I don't have much holiday. And I got to look after the kids. So we, we do this occasionally. So mm -hmm. it's 12th and 13th and 19th and 20th. Mm -hmm. and it, it, where, where are you again? Amanda, you're on oh, Eastern, yeah. aren't you? So it's 7.30 in the morning to 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the UK, it's 12.30 to 8.30. And that's the latest I can teach, 8.30 at night. Okay. If you're in, 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 um, in California, it's 4.30 in the morning. It's early, but... I made it as late as I could at my end, but also people used to fly to England for this. So 4.30 in the morning, they thought it was a pretty good deal rather than flying all the way here, which is difficult. Can't do that anyway now, anyway, at the moment. It's 4.30 a.m. Pacific to 12.30 p.m. Pacific. And in Europe, it's 1.30 to 9.30 in the evening. Okay. So we have people from all over the world come on this. So that's the next training. So there's a spring, summer, and autumn training. Um, 
The total cost is 520 pounds, about 750 US dollars. But that's equivalent to about five and a half hour of private sessions. Okay, so, um, okay, so th thanks for coming, CG. You have to go now, yeah? Thank you. Do you have any final questions while, while before you go? No, I don't have any. Thank you so much for hosting this. Okay, thanks for coming. Right. Bye. Bye. So it's equivalent to about five and a half hours of private session. So if you learn the training, what it can do is it basically it allows you to clear 80% of the issues which are bugging you and you move forward in life much faster. I, I've done this for about since 2006 and my life's radically changed because it means when a program came out, rather than suffering under its, its grip, I just keep clearing them all and clearing them all. So I went from... Um, Really making a living as a therapist to actually having a global teaching business and doing what I love doing, which is really teaching now. So I don't do many sessions now because it's getting clear enough with myself has got me to training lots of different practitioners all over the world to make a difference in consciousness, to raise consciousness in the world. And if you want to secure your place, it's a non-refundable deposit of 175 pounds or about 220 US dollars to secure your place. And you don't have to pay the balance until about two weeks before. So, and if you want to find out more, go to thedivinehealingtraining.com, okay? And to find out more, and you can book there if you decide to come at some stage. Only come if you feel ready. Uh, you probably never hear that from anyone, but only come if you feel ready. Okay, you'll know if you're ready for this. Because we only want people who are at the right frequency and readiness to actually turn up. You might need longer, but you'll know. But if you want to try a one-on-one -on -one session to go have something a bit deeper than this, um, Charlotte here, okay, Charlotte Rosie Sleek, she's our training coordinator. She's a very good divine healer as well. Um, free up your life with divinehealing.com. This will take us to the session page on our website if you want to try it. Try it out. Sessions are about now and a quarter hour and a half. Uh, she's shortened them because she's very fast with us. So you basically get a lot more than you would normally. Um, so yeah, it's a tool that comes from source. It comes from many different um, groups of being, which is unusual for healing therapy. They put it together from source because it was a way of burning through our ego so that we could get back to source and consciousness. That's what because we're ascending in consciousness. This is why it came here. And Almira Ario Halea, who used to run the center with me, okay, also my ex wife, but we still work together. She developed this with two other um, colleagues in 2006. They channeled all those charts and you saw at the beginning and um, started putting this together. And so it sort of evolved because we needed a healing tool to work on our own issues, a very strong one. And so the universe delivered this to us. So that's where it comes from. Okay, so any questions, anybody, before we finish for today, either in the chat or just ask me? Jennifer? Whether or not you feel a difference or a shift or a change, that doesn't mean something's not taking place, whether you feel it or not, correct? Yeah, some. Some of the charts seem innocuous, but the, it's a cumulative effect of them. If you spent an hour and a half in a session doing it or four days training in it, receiving the energy, basically mm -hmm. it dismantles in the right order. So if things seem to be going quiet and suddenly you do another chart, then a big shift occurs. But the reason that it is needed all the previous charts to unpick all the different defensive mechanisms of the ego to get to the big issue. Mm -hmm. So it varies the effect. Okay. I, yeah. I figured so. But I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. So it's important just to surrender to the process. Don't have any expectation. It should be a certain way because you just trust the higher self. See, so you as a human, the personality, well, you don't have to work it out. You've actually just got to get out of your own way and surrender and align to higher consciousness. It's got to figure it out. We're, you're actually more of a nuisance if you try and figure it out because you're, you're slowing the process down. Okay. But your intention is you want to become whole and unified is enough. And that alignment with high self is the key, and then life completely unfolds. 
eventually. So any other questions or put them in the chat guys or just talk to me before I go, or we all go. Maria? Nicholas, do you recommend a so contract reading before a divine healing session, not the workshop, but session? Um, it's not necessary. It does help because then you know more of your issues and quite a few have been exposed to the work. It means that you can map what presents in the session to what's actually in the soul contract chart. So you get, you get more data. It acts as a really nice structure and guideline for working, working as a both from a as a client and also as a practitioner, because everyone knows everyone knows what's going on. And those of you exposed to the soul contract know how powerful it is. Because the fact that you're conscious of what the program is, that means you're halfway there because ego can't hide anymore because you know what's going on. And it's been it's your whole life trying to trying to hide from you what it's really up to. And so what we're doing is we're shining the light of consciousness on it. And once that happens, once the truth is out, you can't put it back, as you know. It's toast basically gradually on those programs because you, you know what's driving them. You see, so you can correlate with what's coming up with what's in your contract or your own contract. Okay. Yeah, that's my passion following my contract and yeah. <laughs> finding out the connecting the dots. <laughs> yeah, because it allows the contract allows you to focus on what's important and both life, but on your healing process. So you say, ah, this is, there's a three coming up or a nine coming up, disempowerment or unworthiness. So you know it's a major issue. So time to work on it. Okay. okay. So we're shining a light of consciousness in order to awaken and get back home to source. That's what we're doing here. Any other ones before we finish? No? Okay. So thanks, guys, for total engagement. Appreciate it. And um, we'll get the video to you in a few days. I've got a Divine Healing 2 class starting in a couple, uh, on Thursday. So we'll get it to you by the end of the week, I'd say. Early next week at the latest. Okay. So enjoy. Thank and you. Hopefully we'll see you on, some of you on the course if you're ready. And mm. um, yeah. I hope life goes well as a result of this. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.